On August the 15th, Melissa Lawrence, Timmy Hedgepeth, and I met with FEMA representatives to discuss information that was needed to proceed with the FEMA reimbursement applications. The information was provided, and we have sent back the completed application that has been signed. On August the 18th, Kathy Lane, Lisa Cherry, Billy Felton, Joe Waffle, and I met to discuss GIS. The plan effective on August the 18th is for GIS updates and corrections to be sent from Lisa Cherry to Joe Waffle at the end of each month. Mr. Waffle will update GIS within one month. Do you have any questions? Um, on August 15th, mm -hmm. same with uh, Ms. Kenny. Um, Billy wouldn't have been involved in that. Billy was in a training. Okay. But th th this was not something Billy could have answered anyway. All of it dealt with Timmy's project. Concerning the meeting with um, Kathy Gates and did um, they try to work out? That was the meeting that was held before she came. Okay. That is why there was no action taken at the office commissioner's meeting. We have a follow-up meeting that's just been scheduled for September the 12th, where she will give us some more information so that she can we can bring it back to you at the October 4th meeting. Okay. Oh, the Sprayfield project. Um, so three people attended. You know they were contractors or two were contractors that were interested in bidding on the entire project. Another was an engineer who was here um, to for help learn more and I think to offer services if um, subcontractors were needed. Well it's good that we had interest in the project. We do have to have three bids though in order for it to go forward. If we do not have three bids, they have to be rejected and we do have to re-advertise because of the cost of the project. Well, and there may be others who just did not come to the meeting. It was not a requirement to attend this pre-conference meeting. Well, we'll find out on the 14th. Okay, thank you. Um, Pat, Ms. Lane. Uh, wonderful. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, we had a few things. We got the collector's report. We had an opportunity to see the, uh, the levy posted. Those tax notices were mailed. Uh, a few stragglers that people will receive probably into, uh, you know, midweek or so. Um, uh, a few of the taxpayers have been calling and uh, questions and that kind of thing. We pay in, of course, naturally. So. Any specific questions regarding that collector's report? I have uh, <coughs> a question uh, regarding our recently mailed tax notices. Uh, I noticed, I didn't see on there specifically where it said it had to be paid by January, whatever, I think it just showed. Uh, at the very top right hand portion, there is before January 6th. The deadline is January 5th. So it, is on the it is at the very top portion, okay. right-hand portion of that. As we do, we have a bold uh, lettering format. We try to be creative with red and the bold, if you will, to, to you remind taxpayers. And that never changes September 1, January 5th of, of every year, of course. But it, yes, sir, it is in that right-hand portion. Okay. Well, I certainly appreciate that they got item in, in, in the office. Oh, yes, ma'am. So it gives people more time to see the money. payments in. Yes, thank you. And I had a question, too, uh, Ms. Lane, Madam Chairman, if I might address yes. it. That, uh, have you had many uh, inquiries as to the rebound? Yes, oddly enough, um, they did not get their rebound notice or they misplaced it uh, of some sort, or maybe they didn't pay attention to it, that, uh, you know, whatever the, the story. Uh, they're questioning the value at this point. What happened, what occurred, that kind of thing. So we're, we're building those as, you know, I mentioned to the staff, we would probably have those questions. Um, a lot of people, when they get that, if it's not a bill, they're unlikely to really uh, give it much attention, often may be the case. So, uh, But we are getting a few questions, why to go down, what happened, um, even questions regarding the rate in, in terms of the tax rate for those that didn't really understand, um, you know, the goings on, if you will, and you're seeing that now, too. So we're, we're building all those questions. They've been comfortable with the answers, if you will, so. And we thought we would. It's likely the case. 
um, you know, following a reappraisal, you get your tax notice, and there might be the difference or the um, they are either increase or decrease. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, when you see that number with the dollar sign in front of it. With the actual bill, yes, ma'am. Actual bill, it opens your eyes. There is a bit more uh, lasting, I guess, uh, impression. Yes. Okay, I do see attached to this. We have a uh, about your to collect case changes. Yes, ma'am. The annual charge of, of taxes, if you will, and I've referenced. I think a copy for the board so they could uh, see all those totals as they appear. Okay, this is attached to your tax collector's report. We had to do this on a yearly basis. Uh, if you want to glance at that. Um, you, last year you did not, it was a, a company in the collector's report. So that is something from here on out. I, I think it would be okay. keen to see that. Um, you know, kind of a, a bird's eye view, if you will. Just put it at the bottom instead of referencing the collector's report, um, particularly. You have those totals referenced, but it's good to see them antiquated, particularly with the charge uh, pertaining to a general statute. I like it. I like it. Thank you. Okay, yes, sir. Commissioner Good. Yes, uh, Madam Chairman, I'll make a motion that we empower, authorize, empower, and command the tax collector to uh, collect the taxes that's been assessed for uh, this coming year and for all receipts that are cool. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Yes, ma'am. I'll second that motion, Madam Chairman. Motion's been made to second. Any to follow the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Uh, all those opposed. We've got past five zero and we will do that sign. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do believe you have a request for a refund. Mm -hmm. um, that is correct, yes ma'am. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the one oh three uh thirty six uh DMV refund actually all the documentation has been referenced there for you. And they have moved to Virginia, I believe. That is correct. Yes, okay, you've had the information before us. Um, entertain a motion. Madam Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the refund. Okay, I think you need to state the mic. $103.36. I make a motion that we approve the refunding question for $103.36. Do I have a second? I second the motion to amend the Motion's been made and second. Any discussion? It really does help us with all the documentation that we provide. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? That's approved as well. Vote is 5 0. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, yes. Oh, yes, I was. I did have the notation about the gap billing. I did want to just inform the board if they start receiving phone calls, that is something very new to the Department of Revenue came out with, the gap billing report. Yes. Explain you know, that for everybody. Yeah, you know, the gap billing is related to motor vehicles that if you miss a portion of time between the time you get it inspected and those uh, renewal takes place, if it's three months or two months or even one month, technically by law, each county must generate a bill. Now, of course, we have a, 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 our resolution uh, from 2011 with a minimal bill amount based on, you know, we don't send taxes under $2. But it gets into a question, what is the value of that motor vehicle? The number of months that it was parked in the yard and they didn't get inspected. We would encourage everybody not to let that happen, although, you know, sometimes things prohibit that. So that period of time, technically it's not tax. That is our gap bill, if it's three months or 15 months. Um, 
Uh, I had Shelly, a DMV, Shelly Stone, with the, the, our point person, and the, she pulled some numbers every month. On the average, we may see 33 uh, of those cases, 33 accounts, if you will. Um, and the number of months varies from, we've seen as low as one month to as high as 33 months. And some of those bills may be considerable based on the value of the vehicle. Uh, you know, we, we must be, like I said, we don't, uh, you know, uh, whether or not it gets written off is another question. However, the, this, you know, the, the task at hand, we, we still bill for that. And that's something very new from, uh, that's just occurred this summer with, you, you saw our reference to the state bill that passed and all that literature that came with it with the uh, General Assembly. So we, we in essence, we're, we're saddled each county with creating that bill and billing those, those individuals for that. But just so that we all are citizens that everyone understand, if someone has an automobile and they decide that for whatever reason, I'm not going to inspect it, I'm not going to license it this year, but next year, get an inspect, I get my license, put an inspect on it. So now the, we're going to go back as a county through this gap and tax them from the time it was not inspected and registered. And That's right. That is true. We're going to try and recapture that amount of money missed. And then they're likely, even if you miss a one or two month window, you're still going to have fees um, encumbered by DMV. Now that fee is unrelated to any tax. That may be $15 penalty, if you will, for waiting that portion of time where you get your renewal notice, your invitation to renewal, and you, you wait, or, or for whatever reason, uh, you miss your window of time. You're still gonna have a fee probably from DMV unrelated to our gap bill that we're gonna be creating based on that value amount. Now there's a little bit of intricate math based on the value, based on the number of months, based on that renewal snapshot in time, and then you're going to add interest to that, you know, two percent and three quarters of a percent as that bill is unpaid. So you're right, Mr. Jordan. That uh, is going to be an opportunity for uh, counties to try and recapture some of that uh, with the end, you know. And then you, you're going to get the call saying, uh, "I paid my penalty." Naturally, a taxpayer will be, you know, making that argument. Of course, unrelated to what we're doing with the so-called uh, taxes. And this. Yes, this is I, I was just saying, this is because of the North Carolina general statute. It's not something that we created here. It is yeah, that's right. right. It is big, dictated. Big yes, ma'am. Uh, dictated by that Senate Bill 628, as they refer to it, uh, just passing this summer. And where normally DMV collects all the taxes, in this case, the county is going to be responsible for issuing a separate bill. The, for that gap bill, yes, right. sir. It's termed that gap bill because it's uh, that gap in time, whether it's one or, or two months, um, you know, based on uh, the period of time it was not licensed uh, for whatever reason. And, you know, in some cases we invite people, if they're really not going to uh, renew it, it's part of the yard, it becomes listed as personal property. However, these circumstances are related to vehicles who really are on the road. I mean, they're not like they're... Uh, you know, blowing the head gas getting propped up on blocks, they're, they're going to be back on the road just a matter of time. That window just just fell short for them. And, and so we have a chance to recapture that, that tax money. Uh, you know. every, every county's kind of developed their own um, based on that Senate bill. Uh, some billing, we've got some bill templates in place for that billing notice to be sent. But I wanted to inform the board because you're, you're likely to get the phone call. Why did I get this bill? What is it? They don't understand because they just paid that penalty at DMV, whether it's fifteen dollars based on their time frame or or twenty dollars or whatever that, that penalty would be. So that was my, um, you know, kind of a, a motion here today, just to let the board know, if you will, of, of what would be transpiring. Now, within that general session, does the state reach into your register and, and take some money away from the county? Uh, not, not a bit, not a bit, not as that bill is uh, defined so far. Uh, we are uh, encumbered with the task of first creating that bill, getting the valuation amount based on the number of months, and all that is specific when we uh, pull that report. It's got that cleanly identified with every person and the number of months and that value amount. So we're also getting that value uh, from DMV that they've been billing for that vehicle. If it's worth value of sixteen thousand or. $5,000, if you will. That's what our basis for the bill. 
but the next year, no, no sir, not that we're aware of yet, that has not come down with uh, any that, uh, When that person goes, they're not aware of the gap. So when they go to uh, get a fresh tag, that vehicle, DMV is going to alert them that they have to come to us to get a receipt. If it's a new vehicle, likely there may or may not be any, any gap involved. I mean, it, it does vary. But That's there, the there, first trigger, isn't it? Uh, well, the first trigger. it would be, and then the reports generated from, from DMV to say, hey, this person, because they have that specific in the STARS BTS database. It is very, uh, it's a unique report, it's very thorough. It's I would, you'd look in there, they have a lot of data. They've got every car you own, whether it's a Camry or a Mercedes, and it's specific in nature with that value and the number of months um, that it was not licensed. So that's going to be a trigger, that BTS report, every month. And I kind of took a glance, and, you know, we may have 33 a month. We, it varies. We, we may have 10 a month or so. It's a... Uh, and the values are across the board. You may have something as high as uh, 20 some thousand or as low as 5,000. So. But you're, you're right, those triggers and, and the VTS report is specific in nature. It's, it's going to pull all that in the database, and we're going to be able to pull from that and print and, and see who the, um, um, those individuals, if you will, countywide. You know, it's, it's specific in nature. Anybody, yes, sir? Interesting. <laughs> Okay. Uh, anything else? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, going on with Father Dane. Any additional department reports? Okay. Uh, if you look at uh, on our table, and you know, I guess we did get this North Carolina health card report card as an item of interest and um, it is it's got some very interesting information in it. Like where we stand as a state in health care for a variety of things like children and they, you know, some areas we have improved in or well, most areas we have improved in but there are still some gaps so I would advise you to take a look at that. Uh, anything else? If there was only one copy, so if you'll share that, please. There's only okay. one provided to the county. Oh, no, I got one. You got one at home. Yeah. I think I have another one in my sack. Okay. Moving along. Uh, moving along. We have an uh, invitation as well up here. Uh, concerning the um, algae and the Chowan River Basin. There's a meeting tomorrow. No. Yes. No, this one is um, the 13th at COA. So. Okay, moving along. We have no public hearings. Okay, the old business first item is the historic courthouse. I apologize. You had in your folder email from SpaceX regarding their recommendations for the West Wing. And I sent you an email also last week that showed where there had been questions about the documents and the drawings and what are other options that are available to us as we try to look forward to repair this. And the first question that people had a concern about was about the bracing that was recommended by Clearscape. And the concern was it was metal, it was very job specific, and the time and labor that it would take to construct the bracing would possibly exceed the amount of money that it would take once you put in time, labor, and materials to actually repair the walls. 
there was also a question about the block wall being structural in nature. Had the roof of the west wing been inspected recently? And there was an alternate one and two provided with the information provided by Fairscape. And the statement was made, was considered them historic homes are moved on a regular basis. And the responses from Clearscapes are as follows. And as I stated, I did forward this last week to you. They say, given the roof is an existing historic element, it's structurally sound, and they want to preserve it along with the windows and the doors. And it frees the contractor from marrying new wood construction to the old, so there, there would not be an issue with plumb and square. And they said that you've also re-roofed the entire structure, and they wanted to eliminate any rework of the main roof where the roof ties in. As far as the bracing, they said a temporary shoring, they said it is designed just for this project. And they said that the steel shoring is not as economical as wood, and as a consequence, um, an alternate was offered. And the county can see the numbers once they calculate the numbers, because they have not been calculated at this point how much either would cost. They said Anderson Company will have to address whether the shoring is more expensive than the proposed wall construction. And they think that saving the roof system, it will be a balanced cost overall. The block wall being structural in nature, their response was CMU was selected to be consistent with the courthouse being a masonry structure. Its capability of supporting the roof structure and floors, it will perform thermally similar to the existing brick and it's also capable of having stuff put over the balance of the building. They said they're not aware of any roof inspections recently. The roof was re-roofed in the first half of 2013, and they said so they cannot address on it being any inspections, and that they will look into the alternates that are provided, and they would consult with James Andreas and of Andreas construction because he does have experience in moving houses and working with older buildings and that is the reason they did include that as alternate on the plans. So the next step would be to have it, um, or less successes, any uh, ways of pleasure board or any questions? Well, to me, it looks like alternate one or two, each one would be better than the steel framing. But uh, I would think the four weeks make any decision on anything would have to have some prices. Uh, okay. I wonder, I wonder why the uh, I wonder why the prices weren't submitted. The reason they provided me was because they wanted your input before they spent all their time calculating prices. And our input that we, I mean, they have given us options that we ask for. Um, certainly we would like to see the prices on each option before we say yay or no. And James Andrews shared with me, I did speak with him, and he shared his concerns with this. He said it had been brought to him, and that's why the alternates were included. He said he recently moved two historic houses five miles down the road for the state and they did not require as much bracing as what's being recommended for this project. Did, uh, did we have our county inspector take another look at it as well? And he also he provided a, some of these comments. And did he provide a, uh, a list by any chance, uh, a written list with, the, with the additional expenses? Then who provides expense list? No, he doesn't do expenses. He just looked and provided comments on the drawings. Any plans for uh, <coughs> Andrews or Chris Hayes to come on board? And so we kind of have a dialogue with them. If you'd like for them to be invited to the next meeting, which is a night meeting, I can invite them to that meeting. I think it would be very helpful if we had them here. 
Okay, with this, do I hear a motion that we request a um, pricing from Clearscapes concerning the alternatives that they have um, put forth? Both alternatives. Both, 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 both alternatives that they have put forth. I'll make that motion. And I'll second that. Okay, that motion has been made and seconded. Now, we want to that. To do that, do we want to include the idea of them coming? But we need the figures before they come. Yeah, we need the estimate first. And they may all come. Okay, I'm just the the figures
see what we can do to make improvements. I'll make the motion that someone second. I'll second. Motion from a native side in any discussion. Um, Madam Chairman, if we're gonna if we're gonna do that, um, clearly that is open to the public. Clearly. Um, and it would be advertised Natalie on the website. Yes, but it's not open to public comment. Right. So public so viewing. Okay. Um, and of course you thinking we would have it here or I think we would have it here, um, in the courtroom. Depending on what day and time that you chose. Okay. Certainly, we will put notices in the newspaper. We have that. And then anything we do to change orders, we have to have a public hearing for the public to do. At the work session, we might have to call in some experts if we have questions about different things to get their expert knowledge or by um, different situations that animals are confronted with. Uh, I would, um, uh, my final comment, uh, I would. Uh, that and when you're polling us or emailing us for a time to meet if we could do that in the late afternoon like 5 30 or 6 would, would work good for me okay we can do a night meeting what do you think about um, coming in a couple hours hours early for our night meeting at 5 30 on the 18th you have um, supper and an extension report that we already got something but I'm too sure that we can come up with a time. We'll look at it and see what we can come up with and give some alternatives. Because I would like to go ahead and get this, the ball rolling, and get this um, finalized. So, a motion's on the floor uh, concerning this. We've had it second, we've had discussion. All right, is so everybody ready to vote? All those in favor of creating, uh, holding a work, work session for the commissioners to go through the animal ordinance and make the changes necessary. Uh, all those in favor, raise your right hand. All those opposed? Okay, that's what we'll do. And we're going to try to get that done this meeting this month. So, because we would like to have a public hearing in uh, <clears throat> okay. You have to have the first two weeks before for a meeting in October. Okay. Well. The third week of September is not good. Okay. Uh, uh, third week of September is not good, huh? No. You got to be on Monday night. Well, let's go ahead and try to figure out. How about the fourth week in September? Fourth week. Well, it's the second week or the fourth week? Anything but Monday night. Wednesday night is not a good night. Say Thursday night is not a good night. Or Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, all those nights. Uh, may I make a suggestion? that we move on with business and then come back, come back to this because we're going to have to advertise it and then that way we can go ahead and move on. Okay, we'll uh, take a look at it and see what we can come up with. But, but we're going to try and make sure that if we can have it in September, it would be great. And we can, you can schedule it before you leave today. Yes. But we'll need to get the calendar too because we're going to use this right to ensure that they don't have court because court last week didn't run until 7 o'clock. Oh, yes. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to uh, new business. Um, the first item of business is the Hurricane Football and Cheerleading Fund request. Um, they came for us last month and they have a letter in here uh, and materials for us. Uh, I think it's similar to what you can see um, at the end. At the, uh, there is a chart at the back concerning what all Chinese uh, are doing. Uh, 
I would note that Kurtov and Chowan, that their football program is part of their community center rec program. Um, so that is Kurtov and Chowan. That's part of that community center. Madam Chairman, um, yes. we were here last time and addressing this um, before the meeting, leading up to the meeting, I had looked at some prices uh, of equipment that they needed and uh, some of the numbers were sort of staggering to me. Uh, not that they're incorrect, but 60 times $85 for helmets is a big number. And, and that, that line item alone caught my attention. And, um, and I had made a uh, comment uh, to contribute to some of it. Um, I've talked with some individuals um, and looked at our budget, at what we're doing for other athletic teams in the county and we're not doing anything for other athletic teams. And uh, I know that, uh, that as much as we would like to help, and I don't know what your response is going to be, but uh, I'm coming out ahead of any conversation because I was, I listed it, even said I had a dollar amount in mind at that meeting. So, uh, and thinking about it deeper, if we do this, and we may choose to do this, but if we choose to do this, then we need to be ready for the lineup of the other athletic uh, teams uh, to come to us for the same thing. So just getting that out there. Um, and rightly so, I mean, if we, if we were to do this, I mean, I, it would be, it would not be improper for them to come and ask for dollars also. So, you know, I'm, I want to hear what the rest of you have to say, uh, but because I, uh, I stepped out and was proactive on that, I want to uh, say that I've had the opportunity to, uh, to look at it. You know, and uh, just to, to reiterate my statement, I said I'm thinking about $2,000 is what I said. And, uh, and, and looking at the chart that you talked about, I see the Hertford County is is getting two thousand dollars and everything else is in kind of use of facilities which we are uh, are doing that um, but anyway i wanted to start the conversation by saying uh, by saying that because i didn't want to appear to be completely reversed without some input and so i'll sit back and, and hear what you have to say uh, I'd like to mention something that's just recently come up. I've not had an opportunity to discuss any of this with you or with the county manager or, or any of the fellow commissioners. Uh, former teacher, uh, Ms. Wagner, contacted me about doing a fundraiser. And uh, she wants to uh, have that fundraiser for Paul's in Hereford County, the Wounded Warriors in Gates County, and any other fundraising organization. Uh, she intends to have that 07 October and has rented a building to have that. And uh, it struck me after I spoke with her, I'd like to bring that up for the Hurricanes. Maybe they would like to participate in that fundraising. Uh, yes, ma'am. Is it plate sales? Pardon? Is it plate sales? Plate sales? Is the fundraiser a plate sale? Uh, it is bingo and, oh, okay. and, and other uh, folks who want to bring something to set up tables. I think she said she wanted 12 tables set up. Well, that's, that's what she anticipated. What, uh, what she asked me is if, our, if other organizations might want to provide a meal itself. So it came to my attention that that would be a good uh, process for the hurricanes to I, asked, I, I think that name rings a bell. I believe she contacted April um, about it, and it is something we are. Her name is Wagner. You know Ms. Wagner? And I've not contacted her about that, but I want to bring that forth to uh, my fellow commissioners as well as to the Hurricanes. So, uh, so that's, you know, uh, fundraising uh, and participation. 
participation in this county we have with athletic events and the backing of, of our children, if you will, uh, that grow up too quickly and become good athletes, but also just the socialization as well as, uh, as being able to uh, participate in something. So uh, I, I recommend that. Mr. Feldman? Well, I think this is a very worthy call, but if we start down this slope, I think there are approximately 12 teams out at the JC Ballpark that could be a line next. Then we have church league teams that play that uh, have never asked for assistance, so they could be in line too. Then we have the, the young people that play on these travel ball teams, soccer and baseball, softball, or whatever. And that's a very expensive project, and they should also get in line. And if we start with one, then we've got to look out for another 15 or 20 more behind it. Mr. Jordan? Well, uh, <clears throat> and having heard all that's been said, I think one of the things the statements that was made that um, it was staggering the cost of equipment. We know that when our young people play football, uh, we want them protected. It's one of the more expensive uh, sports, but it's one of the most popular. And I do commend uh, the uh, sponsors for coming to the commission to seek some assistance because of the cost and, and the fact that we, we do want to make sure our, our children are, are protected. So I think it's it's something that you take on a case basis and those who have the initiative to come before the board and ask for assistance, I commend them on that. Um, I don't do a feel that we're open the door because you know each one is going to have to stand on his own merit. And uh, said that I, I think that was one of the reasons um, you know I didn't jump to uh, a large figure I said I proposed about a thousand dollars as an assistant um, because you know we want to help we want to encourage them but we're not necessarily trying to finance it and um, you know, that way even if you had to spread it around uh, you could do so and kind of minimize the cost to the taxpayer so I don't want to discourage uh, uh, the sponsors and the supporters and the, and the uh, coaches that's come forth. I think we need to uh, move forward with it. I would stick with my initial uh, uh, donation of about a thousand. I think that's what I said last time. Put a thousand dollars on there around there, and uh, and take on a case basis. And I think what they presented. Yeah, it was uh, detailed, it was specific, and, uh, and it was justifiable to, to ask for some assistance. And, uh, you know, maybe some of our other leagues that are, they, they, they have more sponsors, they're able to get more funds, but uh, I think it's a worthy cause, and I'd like to take it on a case basis. Okay, are you <coughs> wanting to make a promotion? Sure, I'll make a motion that uh, we give the hurricane uh, football league up and that's whatever the name is, a donation of $1,000 for uh, supporting uh, by equipment for our youth in the county. Okay, a motion has been made. Is there a second? Hearing no second, motion dies. Do you have, do you need an old version? No, I would, um, I do have a, a follow-up comment. Okay. Um, my, uh, I appreciate the commissioner uh, comments and his motion. Um, my conversation, at, again, at the previous meeting was uh, genuine and heartfelt. Um, as a, as a commissioner, and as an individual, and um, but when we uh, when we make these decisions, we have to think deep and better. Um, I'm glad that uh, uh, Commissioner Freeman made the comment that he did, and I hope that works for for the for the team. 
Um, I'm very conflicted here, but I, I, one thing that stuck with me was the gentleman who was here last time who talked about the safety of those helmets. That is very serious, and I appreciate his comment that he wouldn't put a kid out there with an inferior helmet. That was another thing that, that struck me because I see these documentaries on television about head injuries. Um, it's probably the biggest team, uh, manpower wise, 60, 60 individuals, uh, which is what makes your, your needs so staggering. Um, I will, as an individual, I would like to do something to help, and, and I will. And if you choose to have uh, any participation in, in uh, what Commissioner Freeman was talking about, um, I'll be sure to be there. Thank you. And if I might comment, that would be a, uh, a yearly, uh, as we have discussed and brought that forward to, to uh, do the fundraiser for her, that would be a yearly event. And if you choose to, uh, to, to provide something there as a fundraiser for you, that's all to go to the hurricanes. She and I have that understanding, and that's not to go to the other two organizations. And I too would like to say, make sure you get it in the paper that you will accept donations from individuals, um, and tell us where that we can send an individual donation. Um, so I think there are a lot of people who want to make a donation. Okay. I'm just glad I did reach out to us. I just checked my email again, and she did reach out um, to me from a public. And it is something that we are interested in doing any any way that we can, you know, raise awareness for the team for one, mm -hmm. and also bring in funds for the team. <clears throat> you know, we want to do that. And I do appreciate, you know. And I am serious, make sure, try to get a, something in the table where we can send out donations. Okay. Because we can do something for our Okay. Um, and, it, and it is it is true, I think, you know, case by case, just for future, you know, for other teams, I'm quite sure that that probably will spark interest like well if they could do it, you know, maybe we can do it. Um, and it is, you know, a difference from where a lot of the other teams have they have their sponsors yearly. They have the school, you know, that you know, where it's just us, you know. And although we have the time, you know, support of the community center where we can use their facility, sometimes, you know, we are in the process of trying to set up a meeting so that, that can be even a a a level ground, you know, because <laughs> right now we're kind of just up in the air with things. Um, but we appreciate it. I have some football for you. <laughs> well, thank you, ma'am. And and I'd just like to make a comment is that as, uh, as governmental agencies, uh, if you will, divide uh, monetary funds, long come with that for certain accounting mm -hmm. yes. and, and the accountability, and that can be a pain. We, we are prepared. Um, we have been doing the paperwork to become an official 501c3, and um, we have our board in place so that we can, going forward, we can you know, hopefully get grant money. I will tell you that, you know, due to the fundraising efforts that we've been doing, as well as donations we've received, we have been able to outfit all our boards and bring this home. So that's fantastic. Thank and you're going to find it the right way. Get it in the 504 and all that. That is so, so that people, you know, that's going to invite you right away. And we do appreciate your efforts and what you're doing throughout county youth. Thank and, you. Um, Thank you. First game is September 16th and it will be on, so come out and see you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good Thank luck. You. Okay, moving on to personnel board recommendations. Um, as you can see, um, does anybody need to take a break? Um, the first one is a recommendation of like Tiffany Finn to be moved from grade 18, step 1, to a grade 18, step 9. Um, she has received additional certifications in spray field irrigation and collection grade 1 certification. And, we, um, and the recommendation is based on the previously approved Water Department Career Development Plan. And we generally give pay raises to people who have completed their certifications. What is the pleasure of the board? 
Madam Chairman, I see at the, uh, the bottom there, it's, uh, this recommendation is based on a career development plan. I think that's important for the public know that we have a career development plan. Um, I would like to make a motion that we approve this uh, great step as presented by the personnel board. I second that motion, Madam Chairman. Okay, a motion's been made and seconded in discussion. Madam Chairman. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Uh, all those opposed? But it's five, zero. Okay, the second item is a recommendation concerning a social worker supervisor being moved back to the grade 27 with a corresponding salary based on the state recommendation to have four steps between the supervisor and the social work to be effective September 1st, 2017. That's a lot to be said. Ms. Holly um, is here, the DSS um, director. It is, the state has a salary level, and ours has, our county level has to match that, and there was, <laughs> it was a little complicated, but we've gotten it right on this. And then the person is not going to be, lose money in the deal. It's just getting it straight on paper with the state. She will be put, she'll be making like fifty dollars less a year than what yeah, she fifty dollars because of the way it was brought to us. She had to be moved to one grade and the state said no, that was incorrect. She was supposed to be back where she was. So we're correcting the error based upon state's information. Yeah. She's losing fifty dollars. But that that was less she was getting a raise. She was getting she, she, she just getting six dollars less than what she was. And I'm sorry, I misspoke. It was basically a wash. What? She did get more money. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, I, mean, I, I will uh, make a motion that we approve the uh, recommendation uh, of the personnel board on this matter as well. Do I hear a second? That's fine. I'll second the motion. Motion made and second. Any questions? Yes. <clears throat> and I, I looked this over, and the state says that <clears throat> their grade is a 70, uh, and the social worker grade should be a 69, so one grade difference. We've got ours equivalent at a 27, and the social worker three is a 23, which is four grades difference, which is what they question. Now, it seems to me that we're saying that the difference between a 70 and a 69 is the same as a 27, and I'll put it back in a different step. I mean, it's just, it's just so, it, it doesn't match what the state is. The state gonna kick this back to my- No, my this body. is what, I have a string of emails between Ann Holly and Dominic DeRosimo with DHHS that says it should be four steps. So it should be a 23 to a 27 spread. So what they're saying here that since the state is just a one grade difference, now is a four grade difference, they're, they're basically mitigating that saying, you know, it's all right if you just adjust the money rate. Right? Well, ours isn't just the money rate. Ours, we have step and grade. At the state level, you have a grade 70. I'm just gonna make up numbers. They make anywhere between 50 and $70,000, let's say, and then you move them anywhere you want based on, they don't have step and grade. Whereas we have to fall within, if you're at grade 10 and you're at the beginning grade, then you're at the, I don't remember what that is right now, let's just say $17,000. And then you have to go to step two, and then you get an additional 1% on that $17,000. Well, I guess it goes back to the point that uh, it's gonna be salary difference rather than the grade as, it's, as what I'm seeing on paper. But if, they, if the state is brought into it, I guess that's the important thing, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to make sure we vote on something that the state's going to keep kick back. 
No, there's not because there, here's an email that says there must be a four grade differential between the two classifications. And that is from the Human Resources Manager of the North Carolina Office of State Human Resources. Right, that is a four grade now. That's based on, on the county because our county is not equivalent to the state. Well, we are grade 27 and grade 23. That's four. Mm -hmm. Now, they said there must be a four grade difference. So if we don't move it to a 26 or whatever. No, we're moving it from a, she had been moved already down to a 26 because they told us it was too large of that, or 25, okay? Because they had told us she was re, um, re, incorrect, classified incorrectly at a 27. They submitted the paperwork, they discovered an error, they sent it back to the state, and the state said, oh no, her grade level should not be a 25, she must be at a 27. And the social worker three is going to be a 20, is it 23? Yes. So that's four grades here? Yes. And that's what we're moving her back to. The supervisor should be a 27. Well, I'll tell you this. Um, I certainly don't agree with what we're voting on, but because it's not explained here on paper that way. But, uh, Believe me, we had, what was it, two meetings that was just this. <laughs> well, and, uh, there was a mistake originally when we sent in the first play report, and that got kicked back. And it was just a clerical mistake. We, and we all made mistakes. We corrected that and sent it back and got it straight and we did what the state told us to do. Is am I not stating that way? Um, this is what the state said we had to do. Um, All right. Well, when you when you talk about two, when you're talking to verse, a percentage by the state. Their salaries. Yes, they have. I mean, they the there's a percentage. You want to know when you reimbursed for the percentage when the social worker works against the case. 40% is reimbursed from the state, is that correct? On this yes, that's correct, on this salaries. And so we have to follow their guidelines. Okay. Well, we're talking about two scales, two different scales, so that's confusing enough. Mm -hmm. And then when I see in here, it says Ann Holly, DSS director, gave background information on why. Mm -hmm. And she's here today. So that was another thing. Yes. And the recommendation to you. Miss Holly, would you like to come to the podium? Sure. So everybody can hear you. I would like to say that I have kept uh, county manager in the loop during this whole process. And we've been dealing with this ever since probably April. And the social work supervisors, per the recommendation of the Office of State Human Resources, the social work supervisors' um, grading step was changed. And that was presented to the personnel board. Well, then we also received another email, and this was pertaining to the uh, county salary plan, that there should be a so many steps between the social worker threes and the social work supervisor. So we asked the Office of State Human Resources uh, staff and the person of Mr. Uh, Dominic Durazmo, if you would be so kind to look at the county's entire plan so that we could prevent from going back and forth. So what happened prior to August the 8th, which was the last personnel board meeting, he had an opportunity to review that whole plan. And then he discovered that it should be four steps between the social work supervisor and the social worker threes. Well, the personnel board and the commissioners had already approved that the social work supervisor be moved to a grade 25, which was the first recommendation by the Office of State Human Resources. We went through that. Then we looked at the entire plan for our request. He found, no, that 
it ought to be four steps between the social worker's threes and the social worker supervisor. So hopefully today, at this very moment, if everything is now settled, that she will be moved back from the 25, step 18, back to the 27-3. That 27-3 also includes her merit increase. So the adjustment is by $60, which the social work supervisor has not received anyway because that $60 divided by for 12 months, so she's probably received what, at least one? She received in her August, she received in her August check. In her August check. So the social work supervisor has not received the total of $60 anyway because that is somewhat, that is prorated. So hopefully this will be it. I will say, I'm on the personnel board and Commissioner Felton, it was a confusing hmm. time frame. I, I think I picked up on, uh, as I understand, that there were some steps, and they were, they were using grades, so I, yes. I think they're, they're not talking the same language. No. Steps and grades, and uh, so, but if they buy in on it, hopefully we don't have to revisit this again. Okay. Well, they have the email from him. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, do I have a motion to approve this? So moved. Uh, uh, I believe you already have. Okay. I, we, we, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> this has been such a confusing thing. All right, is everybody prepared to vote? Okay, all those opposed say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed. Thank you. I hope we have very lot. Okay, budget amendments. Okay, the first one is number of budget amendment number six. Okay, to go through them. Ms. Hawks is working on items for the officer who they will be here next week, so that's why she's not here. The first budget amendment six is to carry forward funds from the school capital reserve fund for fiscal year 17 to 18. Okay, this is just cleaning up the Right, it's just moving the funds that were left over from last year, pulling them forward so we can expand them this year. A motion? Yes, ma'am, Madam Chairman. Motion for item six, budget revision number six. I'll second that motion. Motion's made and second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. <coughs> all those opposed? Clear, five to zero. The second one is to carry forward fiscal year 17 grant funds that were received by Solon Water Conservation to fiscal year 18, and then also to report additional funds that we just received. All this is for stream debris removal due to Hurricane Matthew. Okay, can I change a motion? I move we approve budget revision, so. Second. Motion's been made and second. Discussion? Um, yes. Typically, grant dollars have a time frame that have to be spent? We received these in, I believe it was May, and they have two years to be expended. Okay, and when we and it's not been done yet because when we received the funds, there was a, I don't know the official term that, was, that Matt used, but it was basically as you could not work in the waters because of certain restrictions, and that has just been lifted. Certainly, we do need as much um, and it's only, Well, and it's for designated areas only. Okay. But any type of mm -hmm. uh, help would be because of the mm -hmm. amount of rainfall we had to get some of this debris out of the stream. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. aye. All those opposed, so it's approved. Okay, next. The, the next one, there's a corrected version on your, in your spot. It is to appropriate funds from fund balance that was approved at the last meeting to all of the correct lines and to the correct departments for um, to pay the unused um, comp time for employees who are not of them. Okay, we discussed this um, at the last meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved, Madam Chairman. Okay, a second. Second. Okay, any discussion? My vote will remain the same. Okay. 
Let's go by show of hands on this one. All those in favor, raise the right hand. Okay. All, all those opposed, raise their right hand. Okay, the vote is four to one. But it is a three. And the last one is to carry forward capital reserve funds for fiscal year 17 within the um, enterprise fund to the building and improvements fiscal year 18 for well replacement. The work extended over two fiscal years. Okay. And that is completed, correct? Yes. Motion? So moved. And I'll second that motion. Budget revision number nine. Okay, the motion's been made and properly second. Discussion? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? It passes. Um, five to zero. Okay, we have a number 10. Um, that was back here with um, um, your information at the end of um, new administrative reports. Uh, Operation Santa Claus, this is a project at Casual Developmental Center, uh, requested $75. Uh, to, they have 328 individuals there with one individual from Gates County, uh, and they want to make sure every child receives a something at Christmas. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, since Ms. Holly is here, <coughs> I'd like to ask, are you familiar with this one citizen from Gates County that uh, is in the, this facility? Uh, Casper. Casper. Uh, let's see. Is it Kansas? No, I'm familiar with the location. child could be placed privately mm -hmm. apart from an agency. I do know of one child that was there, but that child has um, passed away uh, several years ago. Um, we, I used to, we used to go, or a group I was going to in East Carolina went every year at Christmas time. Um, but I don't, it could be a private placement. Mm -hmm be a private placement. And since you are speaking about Operation Santa Claus, and there will be information um, hopefully in the newspaper and on the county website that the Salvation Army will be taking applications on October 26th at the Department of Social Services. But I'll send, I already sent that information to you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Chairman, um, you know, this looks to be legitimate. I would, would um, we know about the facility, you know, they say that they have a business in Gates County. I would certainly be in support of, uh, of um, sending $75 to them in support of uh, giving gifts to children during Christmas time. Um, and I'd make that a motion. Send seventy five dollars to the Capital Development Center on behalf of the Department of Health Services. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second that motion, Madam Chairman. Motion has been made and second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? May I ask which account that will come from? I think our commission is uh miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. <clears throat> and just for discussion uh sakes, uh, I'm sure this will come up again. It would be nice if we do a little uh, inquiry as to who our case County citizen is. I don't know if that would be any information that would be available to the public. Well, I think we could 
verify, we have his all verify that that is the case. We don't have to, we wouldn't have oh, to. Oh, you're just wanting to verify that, that there is someone there. Yes. That, that from Dex County. Well, as, as a relative, then, you come up to this commission board. Has this, is, is anyone aware of this? Anyone ever heard of this before? I've seen it in years past. I, I haven't seen it lately, last several years. But I know we've, we've had something like this in the last six or seven years. I would like to mention that due to confidentiality, I'm not sure, I mean, I would have a name no more than the information you have that there's a Gates County resident, but I don't know if that agency would be privy to sharing specific names. But to verify that it, the person is a resident here in the county. Okay. Yes, and, and if they do exist, you know, uh, just an unfortunate thing, I think we may have seen on the early news this morning, six o'clock, that Veterans Affairs has been giving away $25 million or so to veterans that have been passed mm -hmm. for years. So we'll make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, I think we need some verification. No specifics, just. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so um, we have clarified that, and so we will vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say that is approved, with, but we want verification. Okay, I cannot believe it, folks. But that is, we have finished. Hmm. Well, not quite, but we have one session. <laughs> but anyway, uh, in citizen comments, I'd like to thank you for um, understanding the importance of animal welfare um, and with the session for the commissioners. I want to um, ask you all, please, to um, contact folks outside of the community um, that are very animal savvy. Um, dogs deserve better. This is a good agency. Um, you have in Pitt County um, the Humane Society up there. Um, which is doing wonderful things. We also have in Hertford County two amazing animal control officers over in Hertford County that you can reach out to that um, I'm sure will give you some really good information because I know that you all um, aren't as savvy as some of us when it comes to the animal world. So I just stress that you please reach out to them and not just your regular um, common folk. But, um, I do appreciate you doing this. Um, we've got bad weather coming upon us, um, so that is a real big concern uh, for the chained up dogs that are still in our county. Um, Portsmouth, Virginia just put a um, ban on chaining in place. Um, Suffolk has got it. Uh, we've got Woodland, we've got Allander, um, Halifax County fits here in North Carolina, um, so please uh, think about all of that when you come together for this. But um, I thank you for sharing the passion. Um, I hope you continue to share the passion and that we can move forward and become a very progressive, humane county um, for the dogs in this county and holding the people that are irresponsible, neglectful, cruel, um, responsible and not giving them any loopholes or any way of getting away with it so that these dogs don't suffer anymore. But um, I will be here. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And certainly, you know, we will have a public hearing. Uh, I could we may not try to make the ordinance better, but we'll do something. We'll have a public hearing. We'll just say, to try to hear from you. I <laughs> Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I have some concerns I'd like to share with no will and the hurricane season again and the portion of rain or swamp that crosses 32 south of the intersection of 15832 doesn't have guardrails. And last year Mr. Thomas Song was bad and I don't wonder if guardrails have been there, the possibility that he may still be living today. 
And so I was saying several times, I'm less than a mile from there, that the water viciously comes across the road when we have uh, as much rain as we need. So I'm concerned about the safety of students. I understand that another man was pushed over in that swamp at the same time, but they say he was able to get, get out that spirit, say I don't have any proof of that. But, if I can interrupt, there was, but it was in the daylight and someone saw him go over. Right. And also, um, I would like to know that the, are there anything we're doing to try to replace the family food or some kind of grocery store in some area? I grew up in somewhere, and I remember the times we had Russell Castle, we had Frank Rice, we had, you know, several stores there, and now that we are in the 21st century, it seems that we're going back to the Pacific Four. We had Ralph and Ridley, and we just had several grocery stores. And I know we have a dollar store, but that's not a grocery store, so I would hope that we can do something in that area. And my last concern is, uh, I got some research, and I noticed that cell phone antennas can reach up to 45 miles. We're in a mobile technological age, and I'm wondering why come our towers are turned down so low in this area. There's a tower right here on 158 Business, which is less than two miles from here, but how you get here, you have little to no signal at all. So I just want some concern about that as well, and I thank you for looking into it. Well, thank you, Mr. Eason. Uh, the Rainer Swamp, I certainly am well aware of, um, because it crosses, it cut me off from Sunbury, and I think hopefully we would have signs if it floods that we put up a blockade or something so people would not try to go through that, because it is very dangerous. And that was one of the items we put on the list that Jimmy had. We have submitted that, but the DOJ has not sent a response. And in an informal conversation, we've also mentioned it, but that is not a priority of theirs, putting guard rails there. But I meant, I meant to blockade it. Oh, well, it, we have done that in the past, but people moved them. If we were, um, if we wanted to know if that area was one of the ones that's granted the dollars to be cleaned uh, That is not based on what I can remember. Is that one? Because yeah. that's not. Unless that was in the last round, let me rephrase that. But I know that that was not the first round of money. Because it not only floods on, went on 32, it floods on Bosley Road. Yeah, it's the it same does. swamp right. um, there. I could pass Fritz Fivey's until you get to Sugar Run. All of that was under water as well, because there's a lot of water coming through that way. Um, and it is um, dangerous. And of course, I can see in the TV photos and everything from Houston. You know, we have Irma coming a little up. It might be going toward Florida. I think all of us are concerned about water. Right. And um, certainly we want to encourage people to be safe. And this looks, the water's cross the road. Don't try to go through it. I was coming from Maryland last time, last year at that time. And we did not know the condition here in North Carolina until we got in Virginia. And so you had a point where, you know, it was late, everything closed. Do you try to make a home or what do you do? But fortunately for us, we came through there at about 11 o'clock. And the water was not coming across the road. So evidently, Mr. Saunders came through there later. So it's always a possibility that even before you put a blockage up, Right before you even know. And I just felt like, I, I mean, I don't know, just maybe the dog river would have kept his vehicle from going over into the swamp and he, he may have been able to get out. The guard are very important for protection And, uh, and you know, concerning the food stores, uh, you know, we have, we, we, have, we try to do things to, uh, and, you know, make people aware that we have a vacant building. I, well, we don't have a vacant building. There, there is one uh, uh, in some hurry, but you can't force a person to come. Oh, yeah, so. And cell towers, Gates County is bad about cell uh, reception. And I don't understand it more, I understand it better. Are they different? That's how FCC. FCC. They all make all of those determinations. 
I like the wattage, I mean the signal. signal. Mm -hmm. And we have several that have nothing on them. We have the tower, but we don't have any receivers. Okay, but it's starting to be a way on the winter. Yes, ma'am. Okay. What is your name, please? I just wanted to take a moment to introduce myself. I'm Tracy Lebowski. I'm the facility manager for dogs to serve better. Um, I felt it. I felt a, a need to be here today just to, to meet you all in person. I know I spoke to several of you um, back in June and July time frame. And I wanted to thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Um, I know we come across as probably the crazy dog people. We're just very passionate. <laughs> um, um, I probably stand here and talk for hours if I could, and I'm a five year old. So I do want to thank you guys for the upcoming work session. Um, yeah, I, I work with animal patrol officers all over the United States every day. We're a national rescue for chain dead pen dogs. And, um, and especially when you see things like Hurricane Harvey that have just come through, when you see those dogs that were left on chains and literally drowned to death. Or, I mean, you guys have seen all of her pictures. We also see the amazing cities. Um, I think the most heartbreaking thing, and, and until I started in animal warfare, I was never a pit bull fan. They did scare me. Until I got to know the breed, and until I got to understand chain and why it is so hard on the dogs. Dogs are pack animals. They just want to be a part of a family. And a chain makes a dog three times more likely to fight. Um, and in the pit bull breed, um, it, is a, it is a money maker, unfortunately. And um, the, I forget it is, the Houston SBCA, I believe, every pit bull they saved down there in the past couple weeks or the past week was euthanized immediately. And that is sad to me because they were family pets that may, may or may not have been aggressive. So I am, um, you know, not all chain dogs are, are pit bulls, obviously. There are hounds and there, you know. Um, and I know I have friends here who actually work in Virginia that live in Gates County, and they have pen hunting dogs, and they have, and it's not, it's not the pens, it's how you treat the dog. It's, it's, you know, whether it's a lawn ornament or it's a part of your family that you just may not want inside your home, there's a big difference there. Um, or if it's a money-making lawn ornament. <laughs> but either way, um, chain dogs are three times more clear to bite, which is why most, especially pit bulls, have such a bad name, and it's, it's horrific. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware. We reside in Michael Vick's former home. All of our dogs live inside that home. And um, of the 53 dogs that were seized from that property, only three could not be rehabilitated. And I think that speaks volumes for, for just the nature of a dog, how forgiving they are, how resilient they are. They just want to be loved. Um, so I just wanted to take a moment to introduce myself. Feel free to contact our organization. Um, our, CEO's name is Denise Cohn. Uh, she is and will be available any time. I can provide you guys with her email address or phone number. Um, you know, anything we can do to help, just um, you know, and individually that meant uh, information from a kind of manager. I sure love, yeah. A, a contact person. Certainly. Okay, I just wanted to thank you all for what you are doing and, and thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, we'll move on to commissioner's comments. Start with Commissioner Freeman at the end. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I uh, appreciate everyone's interest and uh, certainly their involvement in the county, the county affairs, the things that you bring forward to us. Uh, we all individually study it, but we listen to you and we have to listen to uh, the, the thoughts that are brought forward and then subsequently checking into that and looking into the various ways that can make it better for the county. So we certainly do appreciate that. Uh, we do, uh, and I say this from time to time, agree to disagree, but we still, uh, at the end of the day, we love one another. So, thank you. I appreciate everybody showing up today too and voicing your opinion. And Mr. Easton, one, one problem we have with locating grocery stores here, there have been several contacted and looked, and one of their processes is conducting a survey of the people in the area, asking them, will you shop at our store? And unfortunately, a large percentage say, 
I will go to Walmart if I can buy a gallon of milk 10 cents cheaper. And that's one of the reasons why the grocery store was not located. As far as the, the barricade on, on the guardrail on the, on the swamp, I think that's an excellent idea, but the DOT won't, won't adhere to it. There's not much we can do about that either. But I appreciate all the input from everyone here today. I do thank everyone for coming and sharing your thoughts and concerns. Um, we do have a lot of things going on right now, and not only in the county, but around our nation. And uh, so we just ask that everyone be vigilant, be involved, be compassionate, help those in need, and please be safe as possible as we see the upcoming storms headed our way. Uh, take necessary precautions that we need to take to be safe. Yes, with the, uh, what could happen, what could come uh, with the storm. Um, not only think of yourself, but think of your neighbor or someone. If you need to encourage them to, to move a little bit early if they're in a low-lying place or near a, a swamp area or something, uh, encourage them to take action early. I, too, would like to thank everyone for coming. Uh, we certainly have a lot of issues for us. Uh, some are not easy to fix. I, I wish we could wave a magic wand. Uh, and I'll, I will say though, with the success of Dollar General and Family Dollar, and I think the Gates family is doing well. It's, it's changing ownership, correct? Uh, that helps encourage other people maybe to come to the county because you have track records of businesses doing well. So hopefully we maybe in the future, though, there's hope. Um, and as we try to tackle some of the problems confronting us, um, you know, we're all looking to make our county better um, for all, everyone and for our animals as well. And um, as, we, as the storm is approaching, take heed, uh, stock up, be prepared, and um, if you, if you need to evacuate, please do. Uh, and I'm sure our emergency management team is already thinking about what they would have to do if the storm comes this way. Uh, but I encourage all of you um, to be safe and hopefully to see you back at our night meeting and in September. Okay, at this time we will entertain a motion to go into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318, 11 for legal and personnel, personnel matters. Do you like your motion? So moved. Motion to the name is seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Okay, we'll take a five minute break. <laughs> okay, at this time I'll entertain a motion to come out of closed session. So moved. Second. Motion to remain properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, we, we have two updates about some things we discussed in the public section. One of them is an invitation, as I believe the commissioners discussed before the meeting, about the algal blooms over the Cholon River Basin. The meeting is Wednesday, September 13th from 530 to 730 at COA in Edenton in the Culinary Arts Building, and you are asked to RSVP by this Friday to Sandy Powers. It says a light dinner will be provided to those who RSVP. And also, the contractor related to the Clear Stakes said that he will not be able to get any site visits with subs or to prepare a plan of action for budgeting the different aspects until the week of the 18th, depending on the weather, of course. He said it would then take three to four weeks to get all the numbers back from everyone and compile the information. So the earliest he could possibly have the numbers would be around the 16th of October. And John Zellweger responded back and said, provided an, an option to Andreas, if you have multiple subs, it's the bid scope. Maybe, maybe it can be that we issue an addendum based on their questions. So that, so. It will be at the November meeting before any quotes are provided to us. Um, if I could, could you know, to restate the date? I didn't. I wasn't at my desk to write that down. 
the, for the um, September, the Agile. No, no the, um, oh. the uh, workshop. It was October 4th. At the commissioner's meeting. Oh, at the commissioner's meeting, yes. October the 4th, immediately following the commissioner's meeting, will be the animal ordinance um, work session.